Hi everybody! So for day two of our transformation masks, you'll need to find your plaster mask and then you'll need your two inside and outside writing prompts where you examine how you will transform throughout your lifetime and then the culture that affects you. I have mine here, I wrote it in pencil and down here I did some illustrations. I tried to write pretty neat but I may um, rewrite some of these words if they don't look that good. I'm actually going to cut these out and put them on my mask. While I'm cutting out these words from these worksheets, I'm creating two piles. I cut out the side that said inner side of the mask, and then I'm cutting out the words that I liked from that worksheet and putting them there. And then this pile over here is going to be the outer side of my mask. Let's see, and I can put those all together here. Sometimes I did drawings and I'm cutting out those drawings. Sometimes I'm just cutting out phrases. And sometimes I can even cut out the phrase and make it into two separate words, but then put them together on my mask so that they read up and down like this. What you want to do, though, is stay organized so you know which pile goes to which side, the inner or the outer side. Now the next mask. part is going to be decorating our mask. We're actually going to be adding these words to our mask. I'm going to give you guys a couple of options. You can go with the pencil version, or if you don't like how that looks, I'm going to give you some of these nicer felt tip pens, and they'll add, allow you to add a little bit of color to your words. So instead, here, I rewrote the word Swedish, this time in blue pen, and now when I go to add it onto my mask, it'll kind of uh, blur the blue a little bit, but I think it's going to look better than just a bright white word. Here's how you do it. Each table will get a jar like this with a substance called matte medium. It's not really paint, it's not really glue, it's a varnish that dries clear. Please be careful with these Tupperware containers. They're not very strong. They break if you drop them. And then this is also really an expensive material, so just use it sparingly. So what you do with this material is you're going to use it like a glue and also like a varnish. So where I want to put my word, I'm going to put down some of this matte medium and it doesn't have to be very thick for it to stick and then I'm going to put my word on top of the matte medium I put down and my final part is going to be to cover it back up and what it's going to do is it's going to get it to stick to that spot and also create a shiny layer on top. Okay, The more I do it the wetter the paper becomes and the better it sticks and so what you're going to do is you're going to be covering your mask with your words the exterior is about your culture, and the interior is about the ways that you plan to transform throughout your life. These brushes need to stay in the matte medium or in water at all times. At the end of the class, make sure this gets put back in water, otherwise this stuff becomes like a hard, hard glue and it will not wash out of the brush. Some of the things you put on your mask may not just be words. I made a Swedish flag here and I quickly colored it in with blue and yellow markers and it's going to smear a little bit but that's okay with me since I have a lot of paint on here it doesn't have to be perfect so as you're putting your objects or excuse me your words and your images on your mask you can think about the placement for mine I started putting all of the languages I speak English and Swedish and Spanish and then Wynese my kids speak Wynese I put that kind of around the mouth area Another thing I just figured out is that these Crayola markers actually don't smear much at all. So I'm actually just writing on top of some of my letters. So I wrote art and music on this one, and then I'll put that on there, and it shouldn't smear. That's a really important one for my family, so I put it right on the brow Now line. I'm going to put some of my words on the interior of my mask to represent my transformation. And one of them, I notice I have this big paint splotch right there. Because I would love to be the first female in Major League Baseball, I'm going to put that baseball right on top of that splotch to cover it up. For the interior of my mask, I just put a bunch of text, and I kind of like how it looks because the interior of my mask is so simple. I wanted to focus on my goals for myself, like being a good role model for my daughters or eating healthier. If you don't get a chance to use all your words, you can get a Ziploc bag from your teacher and put your words in there and then make sure you put your name. So now the most important part is done. I have my culture words on front 
And then my transformation words on the back. If you have extra time, you can decorate your mask a little bit more. So here I have a glue gun, and these are hot glue guns, so you do not want to touch this tip. And when you're done using it, you want to set it upright like that so that it doesn't burn anything. I put a hot glue stick in the back, and now I can use this glue gun to glue on some pipe cleaners to decorate, or some beads, or some yarn. I'll show you some ideas. Pipe cleaners are kind of fun because you can put a little bit of glue down. Okay, careful not to touch it when it's wet like this. And then you can hold the pipe cleaner in the glue and blow on it until it dries. Then after it's dry, you can bend the pipe cleaner and create kind of a hair effect or some, I don't know, crazy loop-de-loo or something to give your mask some more decoration. Uh, what you don't want to do is you don't want to grab the hot glue or put your finger right on top while it's drying. So I'm going to go do some other parts now while that's drying. Another idea is to take some yarn and you can use this to create some texture or some hair. I'm just going to kind of cut the yarn like this. I don't care if you guys just cut into these skeins of yarn. We're just going to be making small pieces with them anyway. You can take that yarn and you can actually put it on top of some hot glue. So I'm going to add one more pipe cleaner here. And instead of just waiting for that pipe cleaner to dry, I can take one of those bunches of yarn and just put them on top and they'll stick to that hot glue. For the end, I think this looks kind of messy, I'm actually going to just take this ribbon like this and put it on top, kind of like a headband for my mask. Many students want to include some sort of a hijab or fabric. I did put some clear stuff in there so you can still see the words through it, but you could add something like this too. So the last thing that's going to make your mask really easy to hang is to use some pipe cleaners back here and just create kind of a loop with those pipe cleaners so that you could put a little um, thumbtack or a nail through that and hang your mask up on the wall. Your masks are going to look a lot better than mine. You painted them with more creativity and more intent. I can't wait to see how they look. And to finish, make sure you clean up your area. Put away all the stuff that you used if you did the glue gun, and then make sure that your paintbrush that you used to put your words on ends up in some water before the next class comes.